All right, so good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. That is my word um, of encouragement because it's everyone that's watching us. We're watching everybody as well. So Anora is going to help me break down some information. And this is also going to be applicable to prayer as we're breaking down the scripture. It was on my heart this morning. And so Matthew 7, 1 through 5, and this is the New King James Version. And it says, judge not that you be not judged. So that means we're not to judge so that we won't be judged. Because if we judge, then we will be judged. For with what judgment you judge, you will be judged. And with that measure, you will be measured back to you. And why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye, but do not consider the plank in your own eye? So you know, um, God bless us all, Honora. You know, I looked at this from the perspective that God was showing me this morning. And, you know, I, I needed to have someone to uh, actually help me to get that information out because it wasn't so much as the judgment towards others, but why do people judge, right? And God said, remember they judge themselves so within us there's a conversation of judgment and what we give out is judging others so we feel imperfect which is normal but when we come to Christ the imperfections be begin to increase to perfections now I'm not saying that we're totally there but that's the the game plan with Christ is that you perfect those things that concern you in him so you know, to make it easier, it's like, if I judge myself, if I think I can't do something, if I tolerate certain things, there is a part of me that's saying I'm not good enough for anything more than what I'm, I'm given. Do you feel me? I do. So there's a judgment that, you know, I felt God was giving to me, which I've thought about this before. It was just that it wasn't as pressing as it was this morning. Why do you judge yourself? If you're not judging yourself to weigh in the balance of accountability concerning something, don't live in judgment because you'll always be judged. That means that if you think that you're not good enough, that's judging yourself and you won't be good enough because you don't see anything else but not good enough. If you think and judge love predicated on what you've gotten in the past, that's the type of love you'll keep um, receiving until you find that you judge yourself worthy of healthy love. Now, of course, that goes deeper, but do you want to add anything to it? I just thank God for revelation and wisdom. Um, Not yet. I, I think you go a little bit further with that because I was starting to get something. Okay, so, you know, the different scenario says that, you know, if someone said something to me and it's stuck in my mind over a period of time and it was something that made me question myself, now I am in question of myself that leads me to judgment. Someone could have said that you're not beautiful. Well, that's only in the eyes of the beholder. If I take those seeds and that thought, oh, the seeds again. So we have back to the garden. And it is so relative to what's happening and what we can see about ourselves because we're able to replant. So in the garden, even if someone said something to me concerning my looks, what I should wear, the only person that really can make that choice is myself. Now I know that married people, they go through that. But just think about when you get a divorce from um, that person, if they divorced you and you had put everything into their thoughts about what you should do. You accepted them for who they were, but they planted all of this self-doubt. Now you got to go back to the garden and replant because you got to pull up those weeds that was put inside of you of insecurity. You were trying to make them happy and please them. And their words were really something that made you judge yourself because they judge themselves in the same standard. Even if they look nice and wear nice clothes, we're dressing up physical bodies 
but we're not doing the inner work. The insecurity of an individual is a statement of judgment. They might quarrel with you, you might quarrel with them. No solution to the problem, nothing but the quarrel leading to judgment. You this, you that. All right, you there now? Yes, I think sometimes we give uh, other people, even our spouses, too much control over our own happiness, right? And we try to make them responsible for our happiness. Um, and in giving them, it, it's, you know, sometimes we'll want a second opinion about something, you know, like, hey, do you like this shade, like, of, you know, color I'm wearing or whatever. Um, but it's almost like putting all of your eggs in that basket where they get to have the deciding factor about things. And you don't even realize that you're, um, what it's doing to you internally until you know like there's a separation or you get to a point where it's like you know you're, you're constantly having to ask them for everything instead of you know going inside yourself or even praying and meditating about it you know okay. um and I think we have to be really careful with that because when in in that case we're giving that person too much power we're making them a little god in our life when it comes to you know even minor decisions, you know, and it can also lead you to a place of being stagnant where you're not able to make decisions for yourself. You know, you're constantly having to ask this person, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? You know, um, and I feel like in a way that kind of builds up your own insecurities in yourself, you know, we have to get to a place where we can rely on ourselves, where we can um, trust our own judgment and discernment, you know, and believe that, you um, you know, God's got our back, you know? Right. So I think that, um, yeah, that's wonderful what you just said. And uh, self-empowerment is the key because if you don't empower yourself and you're always looking outside of yourself for um, approval. And um, the, the main reason why this scripture I know came to me is to show that it's not about the relationship because this can happen in a workplace. A person can be um, dissected and taken apart because of the work, work ethics or work experiences that are not positive. You know, um, it's family um, uh, add-ins as well. If your family dynamics are not positive, you might have a man or a, a woman that always has family members that's putting them down and they need to realize that they have to make different choices so that they can continue the uplift or evolvement of their own spiritual walk or themselves. Because whenever you are around people that are oppressive, we look back in history and there is an oppressor, but we don't have to live oppressive or in an oppressive status that's that we don't know better and then we choose to stay in the same type of existence that was handed to us. Um, so, you know, I wanted to go into that and look at judge not that you be not judged. And the first thing that came to my mind when I woke up listening to that in my spirit was, why do you judge yourself? Oh, ye of little faith, you know, um, why do you care what people say? Um, do people make you who you are, you know, and we uh, say this with the understanding of respect, but when I look at Deuteronomy 5, I only see Moses and God, which tells me that my conversation with God is more important than the conversation that I get from other people, and the conversation is led by all of the dynamics of the Ten Commandments. Thou shall not steal, thou shall not kill. When you look at not stealing, you shall not steal somebody's happiness with your words. Words are powerful. But then at, on the other end, you shall not let someone take you through emotional changes. When you learn better, then you do better, you know? Thou shall not gossip, it says. Yet people continue to talk about others as if. They won't be judged or they don't know that they're going to be judged. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to have a discussion and to unpack what's really going on in a situation. 
but it's another thing for you to talk with people and they actually discourage you from being with someone because they are jealous or envious. You understand? And all of yes. that's lack minded. They don't want you around them because they're possessive or um, confused about how things in life really go. And all that adds up to is subtraction from your life if you are part of that or subtraction from the other person. Well, the other person is doing good because they'll learn that they shouldn't be in the company of gossipers, right? Right. Yeah, sometimes no matter what you do, you can't you can't win. And so you win with other um, new energies coming into your life. You win with God. And that was my whole um, spill in this here discussion. So it was like, Lord, we just thank you that we have the mind of Christ and that we are not judging ourselves any longer. We no longer care what other people are saying because your will is being done in our lives and we submit to you. And that's our prayer. We thank God for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. And we thank God for the light that shines and that our path is lit up so that we can walk in divine order, divine favor, and the grace of God. We thank God for love, peace, joy, and happiness. We pull down strongholds of gossip, of um, marital um, breakdowns, of separation. We pull those strongholds down and we ask that the families begin to come into agreements to heal. The families begin to come together, marriages and all, and heal. Uh, the ego, the dissension that's been there because God, you created the family, you created the woman and the man, you created the seed that was planted in the woman's womb. You did all of these things. And so we ask for the revelation and wisdom to come into families, to break the satanic plots and plans that have been against our families, that you heal our children, that you cover and protect them in the name of Jesus, the angels of the most high would be with our children throughout the community, cities, and states. Lord, that you will protect our people from all of this murdering rage spirit in Jesus' name. That you bring an understanding heart to those that are having a hard time coping. I pray for those that are in a mind of suicide. I pray that they would get help. I pray for those that have been traumatized in the name of Jesus, that you would Bless them in the name of Jesus with a mind of healing and to get the help that they need. That no one is crazy. It's just that we need assistance at some points in our life. But those that are going through financial issues, Lord, we pray for a breakthrough financially for them. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Uh, Luke 21, you know, the, the woman that came to the just judge, he saw all that she had done and she was down to her last penny lord god that you would multiply and increase the widows in the name of jesus those that have been doing and blessing those that have been in your will not not separating anyone but that you will bless those that have been blessing others in the name of jesus that you'll show forth your hand of mercy and your grace and begin to move, move in ways like never before that you will heal those that are sick and shut in that you will pour out in the name of jesus the blessing of the lord that you will show your face again on us in America, even though we got some stuff going on, that you'll show your face to us that have been diligent towards your will and your word in the mighty name of Jesus. We just thank you for the blood covering and the protection, the covenant that you have with us. We thank you, God, and the reassurance you, you said, now faith, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Thank you for your sufficient glory in our lives that you provide sufficiently according to your riches and glory in mind, body, and spirit emotionally healed and refill and rebuild the families. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Thank you so much. We thank you for viewing and we thank you for sharing. Amen and amen. amen.